Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays for your weekly Factorio Space Exploration and Crastorio 2 update. And we have really big news this week. We've built a space elevator. Yes, here it is. This, well, I say we've built a space elevator. We've built the top end of a space elevator and we are currently building the actual elevator cable that goes between this thing here and its companion piece on the on the ground down here so they are this is the top and bottom of our elevator we've got little bits of rail going in and out of them as you can see although these these ones are currently goats but we'll place them eventually and so this is going to be an amazing improvement for our factory it's going to make it so much easier to bring stuff up and down from space because instead of having to use delivery cannons or rockets or other such nonsense like that you can put all the stuff you want to transport into a train then send it up this elevator It'll pop out at the other. It'll pop out at the other end of the elevator. You can then just drop it straight onto your railway system over here, and it can head off and unload whatever you're taking, whatever you need to, to, to transport, wherever you need it. So, the hope is this is going to make transporting stuff between Norvis and Norvis orbit much much easier. In the future, we may extend this for other um, other planets as well, but we shall see because unfortunately, there's a certain amount of cost with these things. So, firstly, you need firstly these things are crazy expensive to build. I mean, look at this. This is this this costs us 500 cables, 500 blue, blue circuits, 500 heavy girders, 100 heavy bearings, two thousand aeroframe poles and a thousand refined concrete and all of that was a little bit silly um, but I put down a machine I but I have to say you did get both ends for that at least so it could have been worse over here we're turning the iridium ingots into plates and then into girders so we've got those available uh, we're turning iron into into sticks and beryllium ingots into beryllium plates so we can make the um, make the beryllium sticks and we've got the cables up here already from some sort of previous system this is over here oh we're making yes we're making the advanced solar panels over here and the space railway so that's so th that's why i built it here because we already had the cables here and that seemed like a seemed like a good idea at the time so there was an extra machine in here that was doing all of the the building and i was pulling stuff out of all these machines to go into that we also needed this refined concrete we didn't just need concrete we needed refined concrete and that mean and that e each piece of refined concrete takes two pieces of concrete and some more iron and some water so yeah all of this was sort of messed up and all this was put, dropped in just to build, build that um, th those space elevators because the, the sheer quantity of all that stuff you need meant it wasn't particularly realistic to um, for me to just pick it all up and, hand, and and pocket craft it, which is what I might have been tempted to do for something that was just a bit of a one-off. It's a bit like the nuclear reactors in uh, in vanilla. Yes, technically you can pocket craft them, but they require so much stuff that it just doesn't seem worth it. And we can see here the extra costs of running an elevator. So we have a parts cost. This this is the number of pieces of cable it uses, which is four about four per minute, and that depends on the size of the planet. So the bigger the planet is, the harder the harder it is to make an elevator, and the, therefore the harder it, the more the more the cable gets damaged, I guess. So you you, you have higher maintenance there, and then you've got these numbers in here, which are for uh, the amount of items going up and down as well. Uh, these are relatively inconsequential compared to this one, but we are going to need a steady supply of the uh, of the um, cables being brought over here in order to keep this space elevator alive. Now, in the long run, what we intend to do is build these cables, these these cables here, on the ground, because then we'll probably be able to put some productivity modules in them. We'll certainly be able to productivity module all the rest of the stuff that goes into them, and then we can just feed them into the bottom of the elevator, and that'll be much much easier rather than building them up here and trying to transport them around. And if we can use the productivity modules, then we'll be able to make them much more efficiently, or using less input resources in order to make them. So it's going to be much much cheaper in the long run to keep the elevator running. And if we're going to then start putting elevators on other planets as well, then we're definitely going to want to have a way of producing these things in bulk for as little as possible. So as you saw at the start of the stream, we are, we are currently building up the elevator. So we, as, as I said, we put in, put in the base units and then you need to put in, well, it's 11, 1138 pieces of cable in order to build the cable that goes all the way down to the ground from here. Uh, and that again is a factor due to, due to the, size, the, the size of the planet. A smaller planet would require less, a bigger planet would require more. Then, it, you, then you can charge the thing up. You can also transfer electricity with it. So actually, let's let's stick in a. Um, oh no, we, we have we have got it powered actually already. So it's not charging up yet because this isn't full. But once it is, once we've got the cable running down there, then we can run the then we can run power from up here down to Norvis and power and power the Norvian surface from up here. And that's going to be so much easier than what we're doing at the moment um, because there isn't a day-night cycle in space. You can always point your solar panels at the sun. And so what we've got, Mark has been massively extending our um, solar area up here. So this is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and if we look at if we look at one of these uh, things now you can see that we've got four and a half gigawatts more than we need now in the past we've we've used yeah uh, 
yeah, in the past we've absolutely peaked at five, at half a gigawatt. <clears throat> uh, and we've pulled it down a bit since then because that was when the particle accelerators went absolutely nuts. We put some efficiency modules in them to, to reduce the amount of power they use. So, yeah, we don't... Actually, no, I take that back. I, um, no, I take that back. We, this, this is with efficiency modules. It's just when they all kick in, they're, they're, they're still using 560 megawatts between them. Jeez. Okay, so we'll call it one and a half gigawatts, should we say, for, for up here. And that means we've got another four gigawatts available to ship down to Norvis. So if we have a quick glance at Norvis, and I'm not really going to talk about Norvis today, but we'll have a quick glance at it now. Uh, down here, we are currently producing about four gigawatts. And so... That's pretty close to being a break-even on power. Uh, if we have a look at the map down here, we can see that up here we have these massive, massive solar arrays. But each one of these is producing currently 400 kilowatts. So what we're going to do is rip all of these up, shove them in a train, bring them up the elevator, and then we can add them to this, this array up here, uh, where each one of these produces 3.7 megawatts. So that's like nine times as much electricity. Uh, it's, it's, it's plus 831%, so it's, it's about nine times as much electricity. So it's much, much better up here in space, because there's a lot less atmosphere to get in the way of the sunlight, and therefore you get more power out of it. It. Now, we we are going to need to expand with massive, massive quantities of space scaffolding in order to do this, sure, but we will get a lot, lot more power out of it, so it's totally worth it. The other big debate with the space elevator, and we spent quite a lot of time talking about this, is basically, it, well, the first part of it is where to put it. So our first idea was, well, we'll stick it in this gap over here, because this isn't going to extend any further over this way, and Mike probably isn't going to extend this bit any further over this way. So it's a nice convenient gap here, and that would, would actually work quite well, because on, down on Norvis, that would put the space elevator drop point about here, so just under the bus, where we've got lots and lots of resources available. There's railway nearby, we can probably do some unloading if we need to, we can pass stuff over and put it all into the space elevator, into trains into the space elevator to go up from here. Um, that seemed like quite a good idea. Uh, one of the nicer things about it is it meant, meant we could essentially replace this bit here with a warehouse, dumping all of this stuff into a warehouse and then into a space train, get rid of all of this rocket related nonsense around here, then run the train probably, well we'd have, have to find a gap somewhere, run it down, down over here and into the elevator and up. So that would make, that would make getting all of the stuff that currently flows along the bus and then goes into this rocket silo to be taken up into space, that would make doing that really, really easy. So that was very, very tempting, that was our first idea. And I still think that's quite a good idea. Um, we, we, we replaced it with one that we've uh, we, we prefer, but I think overall this is still quite a good way of doing it because it would mean minimal disruption to all of this all of this infrastructure around here. We could just chuck stuff into a train, that could go up the elevator and then drop it off at the space bus at the top. It'd be really straightforward and nice and easy. However, we then thought about it a little bit further and thought actually, if we put it over somewhere over here, then this means it's close to what it's close to the bus at this end, so we can run all the things that are going along here and being loaded into the rocket. We could run the we can run the other way along the bus, um, and all the things that are coming in as raw ingredients can be can be taken out of, straight out of the um, out of the drop off stations along here, and that means we could essentially have a blue belt of each one coming along, rather than then rather than having to upgrade all of these belts that go all the way along the bus, and that'd be an enormous investment in faster belts. Although to be honest, looking at these, most of these are blue already, and most of them are flowing quite quickly. I don't know whether that's because they're all going up into space or whether it's because they're uh, they're all being used on the bus but either way there's a lot of throughput going on here and so what we could do instead is then just draw out of all of these stations pull it just over to here wherever we wherever we put in the space elevator or the train systems for the space elevator and get to get it going up from there and that seemed neater because as I say then you're not running everything along the bus we could run then more and more and more belts out of the uh, out of the warehouses over here for the for the greater and greater quantities of things we needed for the for all of the different all of the different areas up in space because the one I'm talking about at the moment this rocket pad over here wherever it is down here somewhere this rocket pad over here is only for stuff that's going up to the uh, space bus over here so it will we'll drop all that off essentially replace this landing pad here we'll drop it all into here it'll filter through all these all these warehouses and if you want to know how this works watch the video that came out last week um, and then yeah so it filters through here and then gets put onto the bus and passed along here and then whatever. We also need supplies of stuff for biological science and for recycling maybe and for energy science and so on. So each one of these is going to need its own separate trains bringing stuff up for it. And so we, yeah, so this would be the, this that would be the one for just just 
doing just supplying the bus. And then we could also have additional belts coming out of all of these drop points. So, where, so the, the areas that need the rare metals in space, for example, we'd have another one coming out of the warehouse here that goes down over here and goes over to the, goes to the train for that and so on. And we can also put in more drop-off stations, whether that's more along here that are echo, continuing the, the general pattern for the bus or whether it's putting in an extra set of stations over here or something like that. There's lots and lots of possibilities. We could even say, forget loading up loading up all of the extra science trains from, from the bus stations here. Let's have, let's have a new set of stations over here. There's lots and lots of things we can do. There's lots of possibilities. And so this is this is actually quite a good area to put it because there's a much greater supply of basically everything available over here. It's even right next to where the low density structures are eventually going to come from if we can ever get this system up and running, but I'll talk about that later. Probably tomorrow. So yes, the um, this this was eventually eventually we decided this was going to be a good place to put the uh, put the bottom of the space elevator. There's plenty of room around it for building up whatever train system we need at the bottom. There's nothing in the way west south. This is water, okay, but we can fill water in if we need to. There's there's lots of supplies of stuff here. All the stuff that's coming along the bus can be piped over this way. If we get absolutely desperate, we can bring it down here and across round underneath the uh, underneath the tree farms. There's loads of space around here to just to bring to do whatever we need to do. So this seems like a good place for all of that to happen. At the other end, we have that that puts the space elevator over here next to the recycling area. And there's still plenty of room to expand the recycling because we have noticed that we have obscene amounts of scrap coming in, at least sometimes. Right now there isn't. Maybe maybe that means that uh, Mike has run out of something, I'm not sure. Um, but normally there's a lot of scrap coming in here, so we are going to need to extend these... Um, these, these systems along here, maybe beacon it all up, uh, which might require doing some funny business with all the piping, maybe redesign this entire area because it's it's a bit too slow, maybe, or the initial step could be just, just to run some extra belts down the outside over here to get to get another set of, um, of recycling machines running out that way. Personally, I favour the idea of redesigning it to have beacons in the middle of it, but we'll see where that goes. However, the number of um, memory cards we have to recycle hasn't gone up that much. This system is easily capable of coping with it at the moment, and we haven't even upgraded these to tier 2 uh, uh, supercomputers, and we haven't even put any speed modules in them. So there's a lot of room for expansion here. Um, not so much room for expansion on this belt, looking at it, actually. But we could have an additional belt coming along here and so on. So there, there, are, there are ways and means and things and, and ways of getting around that. Um, so yeah, there's definitely room for expansion. There's definitely potential for expansion without, without making it bigger. Um, for that one and plenty of room down here underneath here so this seemed like a good place and also from here the trains can just drop straight onto the tra onto the train system up here because the idea is going to be that we have a, we, we're going to separate our ground trains and our space trains now the space trains do have to go down to Norvis to pick stuff up but we're going to have them traveling as little distance as possible down on the planet and also traveling on their always on their own special rails so the the railway system down on Norvis is not going to be is not going to all be converted over and have space trains rattling around on it. You can do that. That is a perfectly valid strategy. But we've decided for sort of extra challenge and cosmetic type reasons, we're not going to do that. So we're going to essentially have a changeover area around here that's going to swap stuff from the traditional ground-based train systems over onto the uh, shiny modern maglev space trains. And hopefully that'll work really, really well, but we shall see. <laughs> I'm, I am cautiously optimistic about it. I think it's probably going to work quite nicely, but it's going to take a lot of building, a lot of thinking, and a lot of rebuilding, and probably a lot of arguing as well, because that's what we're like. I think that tells you everything we've so far thought about the space elevator. We've had lots and lots of ideas and re rejected most of them, and we've been rude about each other's in lots of different ways. For example, I've noticed that um, we've set, we've got two diff very different setups over here. I've got we're going to have one station here that's going to drop off all of the stuff that's brought up from um, Norvis up to Norbit, dumps it out into these warehouses, and then filled it and then pours it down the bus over here. Uh, Tristan has done more or less the same. He's got this conglomeration of, of awfulness here, but that's going to essentially, eventually, I believe, be replaced with one sort of what we're calling sushi trains because they're carrying a mixture of stuff. It's going to bring that up from Norvis, unload it into the chest here, and, and it can flow on. And then have other trains coming from other places up, up in Norbit. That's, that's fine. But what, just one train coming up from Norvis with all the stuff in. Uh, Mark and Mike have designed their systems with lots and lots and lots and lots of stations, so one per resource. So they're doing it differently. Um, but the thing is, that doesn't actually matter. Um, their, their, their system is probably more sensible, to be honest, but I wasn't going for sensible. I was going for, let's do it differently from the way I've done it before. Um, these ones, for example, will get a train coming up full of full of um, copper ingots, dropping them off here and then going away again. Um, so, yeah, it's 
th there's potential to do things in, in various different ways, and with the way we've come up with, I don't think it actually matters if we do if we if we do things differently from each other. So <laughs> come along in the in the future and find out how we've done it, because it's going to be weird and interesting. I can tell you that much. I did a few other things as well, not a great deal, but so I um, I came over here and I started staring at my um, Astro Science 3 again and going, hmm, this could do with some stuff adding to it, uh, like, you know, some actual data cards. So I thought, yep, we'll start putting in the telescope, oh wait, we need loads of other stuff for this. I'm going to need to make, I'm going to need to make some things. So, as we've probably discussed in the past, we've got this, this gamma, gamma ray observation data is made as usual from gamma ray observation frames. But the gamma ray observation frames require blank frames, sure, but also gamma ray detectors. And these are made from mirrors, beryllium, cryonite and chemical gel. So I thought, okay, let's let's do some expand. Let, let, let's build these things. That's not going to be too difficult. Although you do need to use a space manufacturer to make them, but fine, that's, that's okay. We can cope with that. Over here in this area, we already have the mirrors uh, somewhere because we needed them for a previous type of data. I, oh, oh, here they are. They're going in here for, for the uh, for the for the X-ray data. So we've got them here. We can pull 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 them off this um, off this belt here. Send them down 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 here to be made to be built up. That's fine. Beryllium plate. We've got at least some of that because it's coming in as ingots here. There we go. We've got some beryllium plate on this on this belt here. So we can pull this down all, all the way down here. It's a long old belt, but that's fine. Chemical gel. Well, we can bring that in by train. So I did that. And cryonite slush. That's that's a problem. We don't have cryonite slush. Any, we don't have cryonite slush anywhere, let alone in space. So that was going to be a, a thing I would need to build. So just over here in the in the miscellaneous stuff what, that we're going to need area, I've now built up a system where here now we're making we're making cryonite slush. Uh, this this works by bringing in sulfuric acid, which is being made over in the recycling area for the uh, battery recycling. And then up here we've got a delivery cannon chest that's in theory bringing in cryonite. Um, it's not actually hooked up yet because there aren't enough delivery cannons. I'll talk about that in a second. But in theory, cryonite would be arriving here, being passed down here, going into here, and being made into the slush. Uh, now it, it isn't at the moment, which is why we've got uh, 4,000 cryonite slush in here, and it just looks a bit sad and disappointed now. But the theory is there. Eventually we'll be able to start bringing it into here. But we have a bit of a shortage of cryonite. I primed this just to test it by grabbing some off the uh, off the belt up here by hand and then carrying it over and dropping it in the uh, dropping it in the delivery cannon chest, which is a bit gross, but you know, it, it works from time to time. So actually that should be linked up like this. There should be a minus one cryonite on here as well. Like that to ensure it gets delivered up here. Uh, the problem is if we look at the other end of where this needs to come from over here on Dracket, the system is kind of working. There is some cryonite coming through. Not very much, but some. Um, but we've run out of uh, signal receivers, so I can't I can't get this set up to fire at Norvis or at Norbit in the in the place where I need it to fire at. So basically, here we are doomed. I can't I can't I can't get this working because there's that, that short those those shortages of cryonite. So and of um, and of signal receivers. The uh, fix for this is, sli is, is slightly more long term, in that Tristan has gone out to Snowdrop and is going to be building up a massive, massive cryonite production facility here. So far, he has made a nuclear power plant, uh, which apparently is about ready to prime, but other, but not quite, but not quite finished. So okay, he's got the he's got these solar panels up here, bringing water in. Oh, and actually, this seems to be ticking over. Maybe he has shoved a little bit of um, a little bit of fuel in. Yeah, he's got he's got some fuel running around here. But presumably, and that means he's got enough steam in some steam tanks. Has he got some steam tanks? Surely he's got some steam tanks. Oh yes, here it is. It's just one of those, which is now completely full. So yes, he's got the he's got his nuclear power up and running. So in the future, he can start getting on with all of the rest of this. But uh, but yeah, not just yet. Backer over on Norbit. I also it was it was pointed out because a train ran out of batteries and and and, 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 and this one in fact ran out of power and has just got stuck here. Um, it was pointed out that. Uh, there's a, this, this area doesn't have batteries being fed into the train. So what's supposed to happen is you're supposed to have this 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 row of batteries coming, charged batteries coming along here, and then you're supposed to feed them into all of your locomotives, like we're doing uh, here and and here. And so you have these belts running down and back up again, just to, just to make sure they're all loaded up with good batteries, and that the junk batteries are taken out, put onto the disposal belt to be taken away and recycled. Great. The problem is that it only ran to about here, and then it went. Uh, I, I, I think I put in some more stations and forgot to, forgot to put in the battery systems, um, and it's now a bit awkward. So I ran this cable, this this, this cable. I ran this uh, belt down here. So we've now got batteries for this train with the uh, the bio sludge, um, and we're disposing of yeah we're disposing of the junk ones here, or at least we would be if there's any power around here. You know what we need. You know how to, we know how to fix this. We just put in um, 
one of these like that and it just powers everything within a million miles of it. Uh, so yeah, that'll unload the duff batteries onto a disposal belt here and and not from here, unfortunately. Okay, that's not ideal, but it's it's it's, it's a start, I suppose. We've got a loading and unloading on the um, for the for the uh, for, this, for this this train here as well to a slight extent. Then the belt runs down here, and then I got to here and went, oh for goodness sake, how am I going to get the batteries to these? Uh, this one actually should be okay because I can put in a an inserter here like that. Uh, the exerter is going to be difficult. I don't know how I'm going to do that. Maybe, maybe put it here and then run it through here onto... Yeah, th that's going to be possible. Over here is going to be very, very difficult. Might have to run another belt down over here. No, I, d I, I, I don't know. This is going to be very, very difficult. It's apparently all my fault. I'm going to need to sort that out at some point in the, in the future. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, yeah, this is all a bit all a bit nasty, but we'll, 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 we'll see. That can be a challenge for the future. Next up, Tristan has made some more made, made some more uh, quantum supercomputers. That's the tier two supercomputers. Uh, he's, he's still doing it manually though, feeding in the bits and pieces all, all by hand, which means we've managed to upgrade. Yes, we've upgraded another two of the supercomputers over here, and we've run out of um, bio insights apparently. But you know, it's it, it, it's a start. Um, he's been spent some time messing with the uh, material science train to support tier three um, catalogs there, because um, Mike is sort of just about producing tier three catalogs, sort of, kind of, maybe. Oh, and he's got the he's been started pulling out the um, the extra the, the memory cards from here to go into the producing the insights from for biological uh, sorry for material and biological sciences. Now that we have the larger numbers of um, of different types of, of catalog available, or at least now now we're approach, approaching having larger numbers of catalog types available. We're not quite there yet, but we are we're getting getting quite close. I mean, so now, and if we look in here, we can now see that we do in fact have a a, a supply of the um, of, of the material three catalog, so that's up and running. But we'll talk about more that a bit more when it gets around to Mike. But as, as we're talking about Tristan at the moment, we'll briefly mention that he's got this sort of set up and configured around here to support these catalogs as they come in and get the uh, the, the, the higher tiers of um, of science up and running. I suspect this might have been Tristan as well, making the um, the be the heavy bearings over here when as the girders come out and allowing us to now start making the the material three packs. So that'll be those will be very useful. We'll get some exciting stuff from. That I expect. We discovered that there was a shortage of the. Um, basically, this this science train was 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 a bit sad, not not travelling backwards and forwards as it should. And it turns out that's due to a lack of the uh, the production science packs in it. As you can see, we've only got that many rather than a full train's load. They're not flowing in from here. Those are supposed to be being made over here. Um, by and, and there was a shortage of. Um, I'm not sure. He hasn't said. He said he fixed it, but it, but now there's a shortage of stuff, something. So there's a shortage of vulcanite here. That's a weird thing to have a shortage of because we do have a plentiful supply of vulcanite available on Agnea. So I don't know why that's not being shipped over here. Um, it's supposed to be coming into this delivery cannon caps chest here. Let's have a quick look at Agnea and see if we can work that one out. So here we are. We have uh, from Norvis, from Nord Supplies, Kothar, Talos, Big Rid, Science Park, and Material Science. Oh, okay. Possibly the reason this has failed is because we're only supplying the bus with um, the space bus with vulcanite from Taishakuten, and Taishakuten is resoundingly broken. No, I think this one's okay. Um, from Norbert, there we go. So these guns should be firing. What? Oh, oh, these guns have been turned off. I don't know why. Let's do that. <laughs> Turn them back on again, just because you know why not? Let's just let, let's just randomly twiddle things around and see if that fixes stuff. But there we go, that's now filling up here. So we can now lob that over to uh, Norbit, lands there, dropped in here, passed around, passed all the way down through the through the system, and then it'll drop onto the belt down, over here. There we go. There's a nice a nice um, happy flood of Vulcanite coming through and that'll go over and get the uh, get the science up and working again. So I'm a bit bemused. I don't know what happened there. I don't know I, I, I don't know. We'll have to have a bit of a talk about that and see if we can work out why that was a problem. Tristan has also expanded the uh, cooking of the iron and copper ores down here, so there's a few, few more machines in here because more scrap means more recycling, means more ore coming out, means you need to do more cooking, which means it then comes down here and fills up these trains a bit quicker. But you know we've got um, half, we've half filled the capacity over here, so somebody needs to use this copper up, and it doesn't seem to be me anymore, I'm afraid. Uh, the iron train has gone off already, and mm, I don't know why it hasn't come back. To be honest, what are you doing? Waiting a time plate drop. Oh, it's waiting to waiting to empty. Okay, so something's gone wrong there. It's up here for the for emptying onto the. But oh no, nope. It's Mark's fault. Mark, Mark has misconfigured this station, so this train's coming here when it uh, when and trying to unload more than more than is actually available for it. So that presumably that need, the number needs to be changed on that to uh, less than ten thousand. Um, yeah, there's 
problems going on here for some reason. Uh, and the, the numbers here need to be tweaked a little bit so that'll actually work. So next on the list of people to look at is uh, Mike. Well, let's let's not try and look. Let's not look at him, but let's have a look at his production. Oh, grief. Yeah, he has a lot of um, modules. He's putting a lot of modules into his machines, um, all of which are now currently missing. So if we look at Norbit, there are 432 efficiency three modules that are being tried, trying that are waiting to go into all of this stuff here, but none of them are available. So there's lots of flashing and complaining coming from all of his machines. So starting at the very bottom, a very good place to start, uh, we'll find that this is the the uh, we've actually caught up with material science testing pack production. That is amazing. That has been that has been a thorn in the side of the material science for so long that for this to have actually caught up is incredible. Is there supposed to be anything on the outside of this belt? Um, I'm honestly not sure. Uh, one, two, three, no, there's five inputs, so yeah, there we go, one, two, three, four, five. Um, all flooding into these machines, and we've got en actually got enough of these. That's amazing. Um, I'm not quite sure why it suddenly suddenly stopped being a problem. I think it's because we sorted out the, um, the rare metals problem, which I'm going to talk about tomorrow. And also, Mike discovered there was a train full of rare metals waiting in the, uh, in the recycling area. So he brought that over here, filled this warehouse up, and then boom, suddenly he had everything he needed, and things started working. So yeah, he, he didn't, check, didn't check the recycling area properly. <laughs> So this means Mike has now been able to go through here and sort of massage all of these machines to get them working properly. So up here we have, <laughs> and, 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 and except it hasn't. So what's going? What's, what's the problem down here? So here we are supposed to be making stretchy data, and he's run out of steel plates. Um, okay. So Mike, you, you, you need some. You need to bring some steel in here. There, there's there's a load of there's a load of iron. We could cook that up into steel, but we don't want to because that'd be inefficient. You need to bring some. Yeah, at some point, he'll bring some steel over here. There's probably a. Are you are you iron or are you steel? You're iron. So he's going to need to bring in some steel. Pass it over there. I don't know why this seems to have become a. Seems to be. A, I don't know how this ever worked because we've had a load of tier two coming. Oh, maybe it's this. Maybe this station's for steel. That's for memory cards. Here we go. Here we go. Steel plates up here. So, yeah, there's supposed to be a train bringing in steel plates. I'm. I don't know where that's getting steel plates from, I really don't. Um, but apparently he was, and he was bringing them over here by train. Uh, maybe he's pulling them off the bus, that's, if he is, that's, that's horrible. Um, or maybe he was previously bringing them in by delivery can, I, I, I honestly don't know. But that's that's what's caused this to stall, so we've, we're not getting any new tier, uh, tier 1 material catalogues through. But up here he's then started making the girders, which allows him to make the tier 2 catalogues. Again, we seem to have a problem here. Alright, he's jammed up on the outputs because... Oh, because he's got too many girders, and that has clogged everything up by the looks of it. I assume that's what's going on here. Um, put another piece, couple of pieces of belt there, and that'll temp fix it very, very temporarily. But yes, I imagine there's, there's the, the, these girders have clogged up all the way around here because they're not being recycled fast enough because he's only shipping them down to one half of the machines. And, okay, you do only get your girder back half the time, so in theory that should just about should just be able to keep up. But if you get a little bit of a, if you get these machines, sorry, these machines running a little bit more than these for whatever reason, then you're going to end up with too many, too many girders on here. It's going to clog up, as you can see here, and then everything fails. So um, yeah, you need to recycle up here as well, Mike. Uh, <laughs> then up here, making t making uh, t making tanks and, and trying then trying to pop them. What's going What's going wrong here? No blank data cards. Okay, that might be a me problem. I might need to look into that one. Then same here. No, still no data cards. Train crash data, yada yada yada. Up here to make the uh, make make this material science two packs uh, catalogs. Then up here we're doing. Then we're making heavy he heavy bearings in order to ship them up to do the material three catalogs. And this is the one I was talking about last week that he'd he'd built all of this up by sort of through guesswork by by looking in FNEI as what was needed, but not actually building it because we were using all of the material two catalogs to make material two science packs to do the uh, elevator research because that was our priority. So he was building this kind of blind because we wouldn't let him research uh, material three catalogs. <laughs> Uh, mostly because we were very, very short of material science packs at the time, so there's a massive, massive shortage of those uh, tier two uh, catalogs. So yes, that means making the the uh, the bearings down here, and then what 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 is even this? This is friction data. So you spin the bearing, see how it goes, and sometimes you break it, sometimes you get the uh, bearing back. So that's nice. Ballistic shielding. Oh yeah, so he was complaining about having to make pistol magazines to to shoot the girders when the boxes with and stuff like that and break break loads of stuff over here. And again, we've got the uh, the uh, the heavy girders coming out 75% of the time here. So uh, this time he has yes he has managed to uh, to re recycle them on, on both 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 sides here. So this will probably work at least when he gets some memory cards. And actually, why is this why is this complaining? 
Oh, it's got it. It's not got enough enough pistol magazine. So yeah, uh, that's probably is going to be another elevator thing. So we can start making the pistol magazines in large quantities on potentially on on, uh, on Norvis and then shipping them up in a train if he wants, or he could bring up the um, bring up the parts for them because I don't think pistol magazines are particularly difficult. It is just just coal and iron. So he could make these on site without too much difficulty. He's not, but he could. Uh, then there's a radiation data of some sort. Radiation shielding. Okay, so you're trying to block the radiation with with um, iridium. Fair enough. Uh, again, this has failed because of a lack of memory cards. <clears throat> then explosion shielding. So you bring in some explosives and try and blow it up. And he's a short of explosives, which is um, no, he isn't. No, he isn't. He's got a clock. He's got a. Uh, he's got. He's built enough explosion shielding data. So uh, yeah. So that's that's caught up with it. the system. Is caught up over here. Um, or at least on one side it has. Up here we're just missing the memory cards. So as usual, all of those, all of those then are fed into the machines up here where they are turned into the tier three catalogs, and those pour down the belt at, at a rate of nothings. Uh, sorry, this belt pour down here, and as usual, they are then put into whoop, into into the train over here. And the idea is that you fill up this this with a, a couple of rows of the ones, the twos, and the threes as you get enough of them. You fill up the train with all of those, and then when the train when the train has a row of each one, it will then clear off, go over to the science area, and unload. And this is what I was talking about. Tristan was Tristan was setting up earlier. So it comes over here, it unloads all of those into this warehouse until you've got a number of rows of each one. There seems to be quite a lot of the uh, material ones here. How many are we going up to? We're going up to two thousand. Of each. Okay, so we are going to stockpile an enormous number of catalogues in here. So that is where all the memory cards have gone, and is why um, we don't seem to have any at the moment. Not specifically this, not this one specifically, but all of the warehouses that are containing two thousand of each of the um, each of the uh, catalogues, and they are then brought over here to be made into insights data, so on and so on, as I was talking about earlier. Finally, we get on to Mark, who has been busy over here with the uh, biological sciences and continuing up here making the. Uh, so he's now got the uh, the tier two biological catalogs being made. Uh, there's a couple of memory, a couple of packs that he's uh, short of. Let's let's have a quick look at those because it's always interesting to see where the uh, where the problems are. Over here, it's the experimental biomasses. There's a bit of a shortage of those. Although over here and mem and data. Hang on a minute. Oh, and there's an excess of um of a contaminated bio sludge trying to get out and be to be recycled. That's weird because there's a. Oh yeah, this pipe this. Ah, there's a gap between these pipes, so the uh, the bio contaminated bio sludge can't get passed out to go along here. So we need to do uh, this. Let's be consistent. There we go. So we need we need to do that to get in order to get to, in order to pass the contaminated bio sludge out and get it cleaned, and that'll allow those machines to start working again. This one, on the other hand, has run out of um, purple bio goo in, in 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 a jar because down here we've run out of um, purple purple stuff, different purple stuff in a jar because we've run out of vitamin. Like, because we've got too many, uh, yeah, too many memory cards on. Oh no, hang on, we've got too many. Ah, again, it's, an, it's there's an ex excess of contaminated cosmic water that we can't get rid of. I think. Yes. Yeah, so um, Mark's recycling plant needs a little bit of expansion. But you can see how the, the whole the whole system overall is generally working. We've made a load of the uh, tier two catalogs. I mean, it's, it's a work in progress. It always is with Factorio. So I'm I'm not criticising and saying this is this is terrible. More that these are the things that need a little bit of a boost in the next stream. Um, and we have been a little bit distracted by other things. Uh, Mark has also added in rocket landing pads down here to bring in um, a vitalic acid in barrels, which is absolutely horrible. I'm a, I'm shocked and appalled. And also to bring in uh, bio scrubbers that are being fed off. Goodness knows where. Down. Yay. What is going on here? Oh, I see. This is being brought all the way down to the science area because these are needed for the science. And Mark is apparently allergic to trains. I, I, I don't know. But that's that's horrible. Um, but hopefully that'll all get ripped up once we get the space trains and spaceships and uh, space elevators and all kinds of other things that start with space up and running. But that, that's, that's, that is horrible, Mark. You should be, <laughs> should be ashamed of yourself. Um... But yes, as I say, and bringing bringing barrels by rocket of vitalic acid. And yeah, I mean, I know it's needed for the later science packs and so on. But yeah, we'll have spaceships by then, and it'll be a, there'll be much better ways of transporting this around. At least I hope we'll have spaceships. That's pretty much down to me. I need to actually, you know, get on to building these um, this Astro Astro Three stuff. <laughs> oh dear. Anyway, that is everything that has gone on in in, uh, in Norbit and and one or two other places as well that I've glanced at when I've been distracted. Tomorrow I shall talk about what we've been doing on Norvis and a couple of the ex uh, exoplanets as well, because uh, there's been quite a lot more down there as well. It's, um, but I, I know I spent quite a lot of time talking about the elevator because that's the new and exciting thing. And having built a, a new and exciting thing, we are drawing a line here and calling this the end of series two. Um, that co entirely coincidentally <clears throat> uh, means that I am taking next week off because it is show week. 
Um, so there will be no stream next week, and there will be no catch-up videos, but there will be a, a, a sort of a general, more, more general summary coming out of the weekend. So there will be some videos next week, just um, not, no streams and not quite, not quite what you're used to. We will be starting Series 3 the week after that with uh, probably more arguments about how we're going to use the Space Elevator because that's a definitely a big part of everything that's going on at the moment and is going to need an enormous redesign of everything. And we have four very opinionated people playing. So there's going to be lots of, I'll call them discussions because arguments is a strong term. There should also be a Factorio video coming out on Tuesday. If you're a, a subscriber, it'll be a, a new one about about FAL, the fully automated rail layer. If you're not a subscriber, it'll be last week's one where uh, Mark is, is bashing his head against Pyanodons and, and trying to advance further into that uh, one, sci one science pack at a time. Well, he's one science pack done anyway. Uh, and you'll, you'll see that in the, in the next episode. Uh, then, as I say, the week after, I'll be back with all the, normal, all the normal streams and videos. Normal service will be resumed. So, thank you very much for watching. Please check out the stream sponsors. That's trefoil.be. And if you use the code LAWRENCEPLAYS, you can get 20% off your first month. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.